he just said that, I guess. All right, greetings from Vancouver Island. Uh, it's November, it's pouring rain. So we're starting to think about winter flies. All the rivers are right full of water. So bigger flies, intruders, it's sink tip time. So today we're gonna tie a pretty simple fly, a uh, little black and blue number. It's smaller than your average big intruder fly. It's a single stage fly. So most intruders have the two bumps, give it a big profile. This one's got one. So plenty big enough, makes a big presence in the water. Uh, it's a little smaller, so easier to cast, a little less kind of unruly and uh, works really well. Good producer. So basically to get started, talk about the shank that we're going to use. There's a lot of different shanks you can use out there. Uh, a lot of them have been developed to have a trailer hook attached right onto the shank. So you'll find like a Waddington shank or a Senyo shank. Those are pretty popular. Uh, I like to use just a hook, chop the pointy bit off. Uh, you can find them anywhere. Up Vancouver Island way, there's not a lot of options for material. So you make do, they're cheaper. You can get a nice heavyweight hook, sinks pretty good, and it does the job nicely. Another thing is if you just look closely, it's just one chunk of metal, so you can have the wire ride on either side, whereas some of the other shanks, it's kind of a pain in the ass to get it sitting straight. So basic, cheap, plentiful, good enough. I got a couple pre-done here for you. So we've got some lead eyes, some intruder wire, tied it on there, and then I just take a bit of glue, glue the eye on, glue the wire on, make a nice sturdy base for your fly, and then this way you can tie up a whole bunch of them, just grab one on the box, and you're good to go. As far as the material today that we're going to use, we're tying this guy, and uh, I actually was running out of material, the fancy stuff, and I had a big trip coming up to northern BC, and I wanted a bunch of intruders, so I kind of found what I had, a bunch of stuff that I bought with the intention of using to tie some stuff that I never used, and I combined them into a killer fly, which I was pretty happy with. So basically, we've got two types of dubbing, just a dark sort of black basic ice dubbing that has got some purple in it, a little contrast. You have the ice dub steely blue. This stuff's a pain in the ass because it's really long, uh, kind of tinselly but I'll show you how to kind of wrestle with that. Uh, ostrich, big blue chunk of ostrich. This stuff seems real poofy. Get in the water a couple times, it flattens out and seems to behave a little better. Blast, basic black marabou, pretty simple. You got the grizzly hackle horns here for finish it off and a body of the flat braid tinsel. So, oh, one last thing is this, the Fox brush, the EP Fox brush, uh, pretty easy to use. It's got some fox hair and some flash in there. It's on a nice wire brush, so it stays together. I'll show you how I can use that at the end here. So get started. Um, <clears throat> like I was saying, it's a smaller fly. So shank, about an inch, three quarters depending on how big you want to make it. You could build this fly super long, super short. Uh, this is what we got. I'd say it's probably about an inch. Okay, so first bit, we're just gonna do the base of the body. You got your diamond flat braid. Uh, we're using gold in this case. Normally I'd use like a silver. I like to combine silver, black and blue, and then the gold with the pinker stuff, but it's what I found at the bottom of the box. This is what we're gonna use. To just wrap her down nice and tight. Uh, right to the end is good. Just bring it forward. This is just gonna form, cover basically the shank uh, and then form the base for the fly. So wrap it nice and tight, nice and flat. This gets covered for the most part. Um, just kind of classes it up so you don't just have a bare shank in there. And who knows what the fish are seeing under there. So, tie that guy off. And there you go, part one. So, for most intruders, 
want to make a nice big bump to kind of get the profile going. So in this case, uh, our first bump, we're just going to use the black ice dub. Um, you can use basically any color. This one for the most part is going to get hidden, but this just provides the base so that everything starts building up over it. So this one's pretty small. Just gonna make a little dubbing loop. One uh, good thing I like to do with dubbing, and just a good pointer, most of you probably know this, but a good sturdy brush, uh, stiff bristles. It's good to be able to brush the dubbing out, make, the, make it nice and consistent. If you want long flowing fibers, you can brush it out. Just clean it up. Uh, it also works to brush everything out, and get everything straightened down at the end. So good tool to have. So first dubbing loop is just going to form the base for the body. So the black ice dub, get her in there. This one doesn't have to be too big. So spin that up and then this is where the brush comes in. Just get it all cleaned up. I'm sure there's plenty of ways to do this, but uh, I like to have it nice and tidy before I start to spin it. So, there you go. So we're gonna try and dub this in a nice bump. We want this to be a big shoulder for the fly. So keep it fairly sort of ballish, if you will. So, okay, so there we go. Tie that guy off. Okay. So, da, 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 da. I like to always kind of brush stuff forward, especially when you're starting to kind of lay it out. It gives it a good, good profile there. Kind of knows where it gets you to see what you're working with. So that's a pretty big bump. It's gonna have a big shoulder. Uh, that works. <clears throat> so, next loop we got, we're gonna put in this is a fin raccoon. You could use a lot of different things. You could use an arctic fox, you could in a pinch use like a long rabbit strip, anything that's gonna kinda add some length to it, um, kinda start to build up this shoulder. So with this stuff, I find you kinda gotta pick through it quite a bit. It's uh, pretty fuzzy. So just clean it up before you get it in there. You're going to want this a little bit longer than the shank because it's going to start to kind of build the, the body of the fly here. This will be hidden under a lot of stuff, but uh, it's nice to have it kind of consistently same size. Just a little thick here, so just clean that up. So spin this up. <clears throat> Another tool everybody probably has, but just a bodkin or a pin, whatever. Uh, when you spin this stuff, it tends to get right tangled up. I like to just pick it, get all those fibers, kind of sort it out. That makes it so it's, uh, when you do go to wrap it, it's easier because it's not kind of one big ball. So, That guy there. So we're gonna wrap this over our last dubbing ball, kind of just stroking it back as we go. I find if you stroke it back, kind of pick at it as you go, that means you're not wrapping over other bits and it makes it kind of easier to tidy it up. So we got that. Like I said, just kind of stroke it back and tie her off there. So you'll notice that big dubbing ball we used for our base there is giving us a nice big shoulder. That's going to be able to have a nice big silhouette. I have a tendency to tie stuff off quite a bit. I'm pretty hard on flies. I'm pretty hard on everything. So I find it's nice to have a good solid base. 
So just brush that back, get it nice and clean. It's easier to clean each individual bit up as you go. Um, no brushing can is too much brushing, I think. And it makes it easier than to kind of pick at it once the whole thing's done. Okay, I gotta just quickly check, see the order in which, ah, uh, yes. Okay, so this next stuff we're gonna use is a total nightmare. Um, I bought it, I was like, oh man, that's super shiny and awesome, but it's pretty hard to work with. It's this the ice dub steely blue. It's like a bunch of tinsel that your cat would like to eat that is chopped up into little bits. It's cool stuff though when you get it going. So, third dubbing loop. You could, if you want, build this fly in a composite loop. A lot of people like those. Put everything in at once. I kind of like to keep them separate. It's a little simpler and less room for error. So, <clears throat> got this stuff. It's long, thin fibers, and I find the best way to deal with this stuff is to get it so it's all facing the right direction. So you get it so it's all orientated, sort of horizontal to one another. When you pull it onto the bag, it's a big ball. So it kind of helps to sort of prepare it before you put it in, which obviously I didn't do. Stuff's pretty visible once you get it in there, so it's nice to make sure it's not too clumped up. So you can see it's kind of horizontal to one another. This stuff I find less is more because it's uh, become kind of unruly. So again, with the picking it out, this stuff you want to get nice and even. This fly is pretty cool. It uh, pretty simple and it works. So you can tie it in a number of different colors. Black and blue seems to be unfuckwithable. So we like that. Okay, so you got this kind of cleaned out. This stuff, as well as kind of being a bit of a mess, has a tendency to kind of come out of the loop, I've found, because it's kind of flat. So here another tighten up there, a nice tight loop. Okay, so we'll make sure again, just stroke it back as you go. See this thing's starting to get pretty rowdy here. Okay, so right over top. So and do some housekeeping here. So again, kind of have a good pick at it. Spin it around. This is a good time to sort of see where you're at. Make sure nothing's bunchy. Make sure your proportions are all good. This is the last of the dubbing loops. So conceivably you could dub the rest of it, but I find it's easier to kind of just lay it on and tie it down. So I'm still like covering that with my hand, wasn't I? Okay, so a nice big shoulder. Uh, this will provide sort of the silhouette for the rest of the fly. So from here, we, uh, we're gonna put the long sort of end bits. In this case, we're gonna use some ostrich. Uh, you could use rhea, you could use whatever you got. You could probably do it with rubber legs if you wanna get super, super sturdy there. Um, some nice blue ostrich, I got a whole bunch of it. I don't use it for anything else. So it came to be in this fly. And like I said, it turned out pretty good. At this point, you wanna make sure you're keeping it kinda of the size you wanna get it. So this is gonna be a smaller fly. Uh, kinda of take it to the back of your trailer wire for this part. So you could dub this or you could just lay it down. What I like to do is lay it down in a few pieces, um, preferably as few as possible, but you know, just take a bunch of strands of it, hold it over the top, nice light loop to kind of catch it all and tighten it down. 
One key with this, or not a key, but like a little trick, is that if you only tie it down sort of lightly at first and long, you can then sort of even out the fibers. So you can get those tail pieces all nice in the same length. So proportions are king here. So you got one. We need some more of that to kind of make this pop. So at this point, a vise that you can rotary vise you can turn, super handy because you can spin it and have the part that you want to work on at the top. So put this in here. If you tie it in lightly, you can kind of space it out quite a bit. So this is where you could dub it. I like to kind of be in control of where each piece goes. And I find this is easier. So after a few pieces, it's good to kind of clean up that head. It makes it a little bit nicer to work with. <laughs> so you'll see we're getting a nice kind of long flowy uh, silhouette to this. It really moves underwater. Uh, I find when you have something longer underneath a top material, these back bits, if they're a little bit longer, really move nice in the water like a tentacle. So it's those steelhead right fired up if you can find them. So mm -hmm. sitting here tying these and Middle of Vancouver Island, you can hear the rain pounding out behind us there, so good sign we're going to need some lead-eyed black and blue flies soon. So. Okay, so we're looking good here, just get a little anchoring tight in there. Have a spin, the nice way of doing it this way is you can kind of see like there's a little spot, a little bald. Just fill her in as you go. You gotta be careful, uh, try and do as much as possible in each sort of wrap, otherwise you're gonna build it up real big and run out of space. So, there you go, kind of even those out. A little short ones, make longer. I'm a fan of having a few different sizes of material in there, not super even because you know, it's in floating around the river and there's not much even stuff in the river. Okay, so we got the ostrich in there next. We are going just kind of finish her off with some marabou. So I got uh, just black marabou. Uh, this is kind of a half-assed piece. The nice long sort of space style stuff is the best. Um, but once you get it, you want to sort of clean it up. I strip one side off it. So you got just a nice piece with one bit, uh, nothing on the back side. And we're actually, I lied, we're going to put this in a dubbing loop. So, I'll try and film this whole thing without cutting my thread. It'll be a pre Christmas miracle. Okay. So we're starting to get close to the head of this thing. And uh, it's kind of important now to make sure that A, we're gonna have enough um, space left on the fly and you don't crowd it. And uh, just to get the, the bobbin and everything out of the way because it's gonna get pretty slammed here. So I'm gonna take the marabou. You kind of can figure out how long you want it. And I find if you just snip the end bit off, you get a nice like straight sort of square style piece. Stick her in there. And I found when I was learning to do this that putting marabou in a dubbing loop is pretty tricky because as you cut it, you just gotta cut that stem of the feather off. It tends to fall out. So you wanna hold your dubbing tool nice and tight. And you got to cut off, just pull it all forward. The less sort of tail on the back you have, the cleaner it's going to be. So you want to get that all nice and evened out. 
give her a spin. And then I like to do uh, my marabou loops. I like to do them in a couple spins because I find these long wispy feathers, they tend to sort of just tie right up in a nice big knot like that. So he kind of straighten them and pick them as you go. Keeps them nice and nice and in line. So give her another one. Just a little guy. That was actually a decent one, the first one. So we're going to pick that out. This is going to form sort of the, the cover for all this. So as with anything, you want to stroke it back as you go. Just make sure that your feathers and your fibers of the material are just laying nice and flat and evenly. As you wrap, if you're wrapping over top of the other ones, you can kind of bind them down and that's not really working. So pick it on as you go. I find if you pick it with each wrap, it, uh, it works nicely. So this stuff for whatever reason is a little stringy. Curly. It's a curly turkey. Pull that back. Okay, so one little thing that I did which could have been better is I like to leave a lot extra loop at the bottom. So as you can see, I'm kind of crowding the thing with my fingers now because I don't have a big loop left. But make do. So tie that off and for this one we're actually going to do one extra step than the fly that I first sort of showed you guys. Space. But, so at this point we're getting near the end. You want to just uh, give it a look. Make sure it's sort of proportionate. Everything's sitting nicely and it's got the shape you want. So you can see the blue kind of extends along the back and you got the nice the ice dub in there adds that flash. So okay so the next part you got a grizzly hackle sort of the the wing or the horn if you will. Uh, I like to get two that are the same so if you have them in a big chunk all together you can either find two that are sort of side by side or you can get the little bags of them where they have a small size, a medium, large. For the most part they're all pretty similar but just select two that are the same. You want this to sort of sit over the top so figure out how long it is and then strip the extra little bit off it so that you just have the stem. So this just sits on top hand is totally blocking the shot, but you'll see that. So it sits on the top. You want to tie it nice and flat. So try that again. Setting these can be tricky sometimes because you want to get them right next to each other. They're sitting on a big lump, so. Okay, so one thing I did that I shouldn't have done is when you're kind of figuring out how long you want to make them. You want to do them in sets. So it's nice to have them sort of side by side and figure out how long they're going to be so that you have them even. But I'm sure it's not going to be the end of the world. These form some nice contrast, these grizzly barred ones uh, in the water. They sort of add a nice sort of different shape to everything. So, you know these long wings or the horns, uh, those are on the top there. So we're going to trim off the end. So for the most part, um, this, as I've tied this fly in the past and fished it with success, would be done. So you just want to whip finish that, put some head cement on and go catch a hammer. But uh, <clears throat> in this case, we, well, you know, that's, that's the finished product there. We're just going to add a little bit more to this. Um, 
I was saying at the start, the EP Fox brush. These are really nice uh, when you're tying to finish off a fly with. It gives it sort of a nice uh, clean look if you just put a little bit of it in a dubbing ball so, or dubbing loop. So let's go. It's a little short one so we can class up the front. It's like a mullet, the business in the front. So, a um, couple things with this stuff is if you cut it like I'm about to do with your scissors, because I forgot my wire cutters, your scissors will be not long for this world. So you just need a little bit here. And this stuff's cool because it's in a wire and you don't have to dub it, or sorry, you don't have to sort of set it and it stays put. Let's just take a little bit. Very subtle, this one, because I took a real little bit. And slide it in. Oftentimes, you'll get two, two flies on each piece, because you'll cut it off the wire, so. You could use this stuff in substitute of the, the fin raccoon there, too. This is fairly light, so it still adds that nice shoulder to it. So we got this in there. Uh, give it a spin, so I just pick that out. Rod can here. So this is just going to add a little bit to the top here. So in screwing around with the head there, I somehow managed to switch my thread, so I'm going in the opposite direction now, which is going to be fun. So this stuff, again, everything, just pick it as you go, lay it nice and flat, and just kind of cover that. You can see these swim really nicely and uh, they're pretty sturdy. So, there you go. Tie that guy off. Just kind of covers everything up so you don't have a bunch of thread there instead. So, <clears throat> Just finish it off. So this fly, uh, you could fish sort of low water on a floating line, just kind of grease line style, I guess, with uh, just a long leader. Or if you want to go total opposite, put a big sink tip on there and fire it right down to the bottom equally well. It's small enough that I sometimes fish this with like a 55 foot next cast dry line and I can manage to cast it all right, but it will do better with Skagit and a tip in the winter and the snow, black and blue, a good like dark high water color. So there you go, you got that and uh, just a little head cement and you're good to fish. So hope you guys enjoyed that um, and hopefully you can take something from that. So hopefully uh, get some fish on it. Thanks, thanks for watching.